Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be diving into a beautiful full moon reading today. So getting a bit of a feel on this energy at the moment, we're about to be stepping into full moon in Aries. So there is a lot of shifting taking place and something I wrote about today was around the sovereignty energy that's been coming through a lot. So I think I even talked about it in yesterday's reading, but there is so much energy around sovereignty coming through that we are really being guided to step into our sovereign self and really allowing ourselves to kind of like rise to that challenge. And we do have eclipse season starting very soon. We're about to be in the pre-phase of eclipse season. So there is a lot of really intense energy going on right now. And one of the messages I just got as I was tuning in to start the reading was so funny because it was Madonna. Madonna's song Material Girl, no, Material Girl, yeah, and the line that says, you know, we are living in a material world, but the line that actually came through to me was in the vibe of the song was, we are living in a liminal world and I am a liminal girl. <laughs> And the liminal space, it sounds really funny, but the liminal space is that pause between. It's that state where everything and nothing exists. It's pure potentiality. It's the void energy. And it was really interesting that was coming through for the full moon because the dark moon is normally our, norman, normally our liminal space. And yet what I'm really feeling with this is we are in this very liminal transitioning kind of energy before we kind of get into this brand new, really, really high frequency sovereign energy that is coming up. And it will be here. I'd say the message I received this morning was it will be here, this sort of transitionary energy until about January, February in 2024. So there is a lot of really, really intense energy we're processing right now. So let's get some cards. Let's get some messages. Let's see what we have to share around this. What do we need to know for our highest and best good? How can we work with the energy at the moment? And let's see what wants to come through. And it's this is a deck I actually don't normally use for full moon or any moon readings but I was really strongly guided so we're going to be working with the beautiful Avalon spirit deck and let's see how this is coming through first message so we have the lady of the lake so this is mastery no mystery I always think mastery with the um with the Lady of the Lake, because to get to the Lady of the Lake, you do have to go through mastery. But this says mystery, self-knowledge, other world, and the goddess. So this other world energy, really interesting because we do have that liminal energy coming through. We are obviously already also transitioning into our most liminal season of the year. So obviously we do have this coming through in the next you know few weeks. We do have this very liminal season. So there's so much transitioning happening and there's so much pause that we can tap into right now. And even though this does say mystery, I'm going to go with the word that came through, which was mastery. Because the, the Lady of the Lake is a masterful energy. So when we see it, this in the Avalon, sort of the Avalon Pantheon, it really is about mastery to get to that, that level of the Lady of the Lake. So then we have this goddess, this self-knowledge sort of energy. So we're going to get some more messages around all of this. But let's see what else wants to come through with our beautiful Lady of the Lake. Okay, so we have the Chalice Well. And this one says Sanctuary, Flow, Creative Force, and Mother Earth. And one more. And we have, final one is Keridwen, which is Transformation, Creativity, Rebirth, and Inspiration. So we do definitely have some very strong rebirth energy coming through at the moment as well. So one of the things that I've been really picking up on is this energy around rebirth and really stepping through, kind of like stepping through the portal of everything you've been journeying through and allowing yourself to go into the energy of rebirth. I'm not sure which reading it came through in, but the energy of rebirth was really, really strong in one of the readings that I did over the last few days. So I just can't remember which one it was in. And then there's creativity, transformation. So we are definitely in a really, really strong transition when it really feels like when you, when you can connect into the energy and really sort of feel into what that energy is guiding us to do. It is really pushing us to let go, to surrender more, to really reclaim our sovereign frequency and rise in. It's like rise to the challenge that the universe has kind of set for you. It's like the universe is throwing down the gauntlet. Are you willing to go through the challenge of transforming, of stepping into your most sovereign self, of stepping into that soul purpose and that soul path? And this full moon is really inviting this in. 
because we have this eclipse season coming up as well, everything that is no longer going to be serving that soul purpose, that soul truth, that complete alchemy of what you're here to do, that is going to be rising up to, to face, to witness, to see the shadow side of that. Whether you move through that or not, that's up to you. But a lot of this stuff is going to be brought to the surface. And then how you witness that, how you deal with that, that is going to determine how quickly you move forward. Wow, there's so much energy coming through. I'm really struggling to get my words right because I feel like I'm just like tripping over my words and it's because there's so much energy coming in. So please excuse the fact that I'm like stumbling over so many of my words today. And to try to slow down is nearly impossible for me when the energy is like this. <laughs> and if, if you've ever been with me in ceremony, I do speak very fast sometimes. Um, when the energy is downloading. So, okay, let's get some more messages around all of this energy. What do we need to see about our beautiful Lady of the Lake, this kind of mastery level, this self-knowledge, the beautiful goddess and this liminal other world energy? What do we need to see here? We have Nine of Moons. Actually, we're not going to go card by card. We're going to just get a full read. So let's get six cards in total. We have the Empress. God, I love this deck. Every single time I use this deck, I just feel so, so happy. Then we have Eight of Swords. We have the Hermit. Really interesting how the cards are lining up as well. Let's get two more. And we have Four of Wands, which we had in yesterday's reading or the day before. This energy of celebration is definitely coming through, but we need to, it's almost like we're being challenged to step fully into that sovereignty so we can celebrate. But let's have a look. Let's get one more. And then we have Six of Wands. That came through in yesterday's or the day before's as well. So there are actually a lot of repeating themes that we're seeing over the past few days. It's really quite interesting how strong some of this energy is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What I'm really feeling with this is this interesting energy of both there's a desire to birth this new version of self, to birth into what it is you truly want to manifest, what it is you truly want to create, the thing that's going to give you the most sort of elated life. That's how the energy is coming through, is this elated, elated self, elated life. But what's actually preventing that is this self-imposed prison. So this Eight of Swords energy coming through, this self-imposed prison, this self-imposed, you know, cage. We have this energy that is, it's almost like the, the message I'm getting with that is it's encapsulating you into, it's almost like a time capsule. It's like encapsulating you into this time capsule kind of space. And the, rather than breaking free of that, what I'm seeing with some, and so only take this as it resonates, but the vision that I'm getting here is like that this encapsulated self is like sinking. So you know how we bury time capsules and it's like eventually you dig it up later, but it's like it's sinking into the earth, it's sinking into the ground. And it's like what's going to take for you to actually break free of that encapsulated sort of version of self. So you, you put yourself into a time capsule and sealed it up. And it's like I'm just staying at status quo because to go any further to grow anymore to evolve is almost too painful is how it feels it's like to grow is painful but to stay where I am encapsulated in this like this moment in time it's actually easier than the expansion and the difference with that is that yes it's sometimes easy to stay in that status quo in that sort of version of self and keep yourself in this like time warp energy almost it's comfortable for now, but it will become very, very painful and uncomfortable later. So are you willing to go through the necessary but momentary transition and evolutionary energy that does require a little bit of friction? It does require a little bit of tension. And sometimes it does, you know, have a little bit of pain attached to it in the way we expand. Which one is going to actually serve you best? Which one is going to be the least painful, the least amount of suffering, the least amount of sort of restriction and there's a really interesting word that's trying to come through here. It's really interesting. I can't quite put my finger on what the word is, 
but which one is actually going to serve you best? Which one is going to create the most suffering and pain? So take that part as it resonates. The other thing that I'm really being drawn to is the fact that we do have Mother Earth under this card here. And the way it is feeling is that it is like grounding this energy, this encapsulated itself down into the ground. And is that actually helping you or is that just keeping you in pause is that just keeping you in this like stuck hermit mode in this pause state so the hermit is yes we can take time out but we then have to like light our path again so we can move forward so we can move towards what it is that we actually desire which is this ultimate victory this ultimate joy and what are we birthing into the world so where is this restriction coming from why do you feel like and again only take the messages as they resonate this is always collective energy and I channel it in a certain way when it's collective energy like this. But why do you feel like encapsulating yourself in this time, <laughs> in this time space continuum? <laughs> why do you feel like encapsulating yourself in this time is serving you better because it is self-imposed, right? So friction, challenge, you know, that, that, the debriding, which I always speak about, is the debridement of the soul, the spiritual debridement. It is painful. It can be really, really uncomfortable, but it leads us to the highest version of self. And so why have you put this block or resistance up of actually allowing that to happen? Is it because you're afraid of the pain? Because you're afraid you won't be able to handle it? And literally, I have said this over the last X amount of months with the journey that I've been on, I have literally said to spirit, like enough's enough. Now I don't think I can actually handle any more. And I go down for another, you know, another death spiral down, you know, I always see it as for me personally, it can either be that you, you know, kind of going in this like washing machine and you're like, you're, you know, everything is spinning around, but sometimes it's like you take a breath and then you know, we have crocodiles in Australia and they have the death throes, which is basically they, they take their prey, they take their, their prey, yeah, down to the, the bottom of the water and they, they spin and spin and spin and spin and spin them until that that animal or whatever it is is dead. And that's kind of how it feels sometimes. It's like you, you get you catch this breath and then you get taken down in for, like for one final death throw, for one of those final like rolling around purging energies so you can finally be reborn into the true version of self but that is painful it is uncomfortable it is challenging sometimes it's like dude i gotta have a breath here like come on give me a give me a minute and in the past year i've said that more to spirit than i've ever said that in my life been like enough's enough come on like give me a break here and it's like ha 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 let's go again and i say that very jokingly with a little bit of sarcasm but it is actually has been my my journey it has been my story but we have to find levity in this journey sometimes of being like come on even a friend of mine the other day said it's like come on spirit like give her a break because of what i've been journeying through and what i still have to go <laughs> go through but this is the gift because we are seeking that highest version of self and without the debriding, without that painful kind of shift, we can't step into that, that version of self. It doesn't always have to be painful. It doesn't always have to be traumatic. It doesn't always have to be, you know, suffering. Suffering is a choice, right? There are always going to be painful experiences, but suffering is a choice based on how much of this energy we lock ourselves into, right? Are you suffering or are you debriding? And I don't see myself as ever suffering now. It's taken me a long time to get there. I don't see it as suffering. I just see it as the current challenge I'm experiencing. Obviously, for my highest and best good, I can't always see the lesson. I can't always see outside of what I'm currently going through. But it's never about the suffering. It's always about this is obviously taking me somewhere. I just need to continue to surrender to that journey. So what does that look like for you to get out of that self-imposed cage, to get out of that self-imposed encapsulated self? Because I do see this as a pause in time, that it's easier to stay exactly as you are than it is to go through the painful experience of expanding growth, right? Evolution, all of that stuff. So what does that look like for you? Let's get a couple more energies here. But I just keep seeing with this Empress energy is this birth, is like rebirthing into the new. What is that going to take for you to do that? What will it take for you to step into that? And we also think sometimes, the message I'm just getting here, I just want to share, is that, you know, we, we sometimes think that when we go through these evolutionary phases, that as soon as it's cleared, we're going to be the version of ourselves that we've always desired to be. And that is true in some ways because... We're finally a version of ourselves that we haven't yet experienced. It's like, this is who I've been working to become all of this time. 
And yeah, maybe six months down the road, maybe two years down the road, maybe a month down the road, you'll go through another part of this journey. And it's just like, fuck, can I, can I really handle more of this debriding? And, and then you kind of move out of that and you rebirth into the new version. It's like, this is who I've always been desiring to become. And that journey, I personally don't think will ever stop because we're always evolving into our highest self. And however we get there, however that journey looks, it's going to be different for everybody. But I'm just seeing this like this storyline playing out and this message playing out the way I'm like visualizing it is that it's like for so many, it's like we celebrate this point of evolution and then it kind of almost surprises us when the next part comes. It's like, what do you mean? I've got to go through more of this debriding. What do you mean? Like I've done it. I've already, like I'm already here. And then you kind of get taken back down again and you go back down into those, you know, debriding phases and then you do evolve into that next level version of self. But it's just like, why do I have to go through this again? Because we are always evolving. We are always spiritually and humanly evolving, right? Because our human self is constantly going to be triggered by the external world. Our level of consciousness is going to shift. There's so much that we're going to be journeying through as humans. And so the, the job is never done. It's really what I'm hearing. And I know for some people, they don't like that, that energy. And it's just like, and this isn't defeatist. This isn't to sort of be like, you know, putting yourself in a place where it's like, I'm expecting the worst to come because that's not what it's about at all. But if you can see that the journey is never done, it makes it a lot easier to be in these transitionary seasons. And it's just like, I'm just riding out the next wave, you know, be like water. We have our seasons, we ebb and flow. And what else can we see? Okay, we're just going to get four more cards because I'm just feeling to go even deeper into this energy. All right, so we have four of swords. Oh, we have the devil. <laughs> oh, I've got that song in my head. Devil went down to Georgia. We have four of moons. Wow, there's four energy. We've got four of wands, four of swords, four of moons coming through. Four, four, four. If you are a numbers person, for starters, this could be something assigned for you to really pay attention. If four is your number or if you see four, four, four a lot. And then we have the eight of wands. So why do I keep hearing Devil Went Down to Georgia? I know that song is obviously there for a reason, even though I hear that song a lot. But Devil Went Down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a barn because he was way behind, he was willing to make a deal. Uh, the other devil was doom. I'm feeling like it's gold against your soul to think I'm better than you. I said, my name's Johnny, you need my piercing. I can't, I don't, I want to, like, I'm trying to find the line, whatever the line is that I'm trying to capture. So I'm singing that song to myself to try to find the line that I'm trying to grab because there's a, so there's a line in this song that I need to share and I don't know what it is. That's okay. Well, I might come to it later. I might put it in the comment section or in the description if I find it later on because I don't want to have to sing the whole song to find it. Okay, so we have Four of Swords, Devil, Four of Moons and Eight of Wands. So Moons is obviously our cups energy and wands is wands what else everything else is right okay so what I'm really feeling for this for starters because we do have the two fours here so four of swords is our pause it's our rest state four of moons is kind of I always see it as a very despondent card it's like not really not really loving life that much right now in the sense that no matter what I can see no matter what I've got access to I'm just not really feeling it the universe is trying to offer you something and you're just kind of a little bit blasé. Maybe you're not seeing the messages. Maybe you're not seeing the signs. Maybe you're not seeing the gifts that are playing out right now. And it's like, it's bypassing the bypassing the guidance you're receiving, hoping for something better, kind of. That's the energy I'm really picking up with this card. And with this devil energy as well, I really want to find that line in the song because that is going to explain that devil card to me so clearly, but I cannot seem to find it. But that devil energy in so many ways, yes, we can see it as codependency. We can see it as addictions. We can see it in so many ways. I think we also had the devil the other day. 
we had a devil recently and I explained it in a certain way and it was a very interesting way of explaining the devil. But the way I'm actually feeling this is, again, staying in that sort of space is that you're kind of creating that inner devil energy by staying in this stuck state, right? We have the four of swords lining up with the hermit with the eight of swords like this. We're paused, we're, we're staying stagnant because we can't really see what's available. We can't really see what's offered to us right now. And this eight of wands energy... This is our like, yes, it's fast movement, but it's putting your focus on exactly what you desire. And something I think I spoke about this the other day in another reading, we we did a candle ceremony in our um in our end of month end of month ceremony in Patreon, which we did early because we've got full moon. And what we did with this eight of eight of eight candles, eight of wands, eight candle sort of practice is you set your intention for these eight days and you kind of journey with this. And this is how I'm seeing this energy here. If you stay fixated on this, you're never going to achieve this, right? If you kind of go towards your manifested goals, what you desire, your dreams in this kind of energy, everything is going to manifest like this. If you stay fixated to the vision that you have, to the goal that you have, and really set that clear intention, set that arrow towards exactly what it is that you desire for your life and don't let anything become between that like don't let your limiting beliefs don't let your mindset don't let any of the energy distract you or to like take you away from that and you really set yourself to that course that this is what I desire and I'm going to sit in that vision sit in that energy sit in that state of being every single day until it manifests right? You're going to start breaking free of all of this restriction, of all of this energy that is leaving you in this kind of stagnant state. You know, we do have our limiting beliefs. We have our mindset that comes in here. We have all of this energy that kind of tells us that what we desire isn't available to us, that what we want isn't good enough, or that what we want is beyond what we can reach. And yet the energy tells us, law of attraction, whatever you want to connect to, tells us that we can if we set our course to this. You know, we're doing an eight-day practice. For me personally, I'm turning into a 40-day practice because that's what I like to do. I like to do a 40-day satana when I feel called to, and it's a devotional practice. And I shared in my Patreon community this morning about devotion because last night I had a really big day. I was so energetically drained. I was like, do you know what? I actually just don't can't be bothered doing this practice tonight. I can't be bothered lighting the candles and sitting in the energy. And I caught myself thinking that and I stopped, I sat, I did my intention, I lit my candles, I did my practice because this is worth it to push myself beyond the kind of comfort level that I was desiring last night, right? So I was sitting in that level of devotion of being like, this is something that I'm so devoted to. I'm willing to sit in the energy of knowing I'm a bit fatigued, knowing that the vision won't be perfect, won't be exactly what I wanted it to be, but I'm still devoting myself to this manifested goal, whatever this is for each individual person, because this is so important, right? You can stay in this. You can kind of be in this energy. This is exactly where I was yesterday, last night, of being like, ugh, can't be bothered. I'm so tired. I am so fatigued. I just wanted to like go to bed. And yet, Every single part of me was like, no, do it. You need to do this. If you're going to be this devoted to something, you need to continue on with this practice. So how does that look for each individual person? How does that feel for you? Which part are you in? Are you really willing to sit in that energy of this is what I desire? I love the fact that we have the four of wands, eight of wands and six of wands all showing us that we can celebrate, that we can work towards our goals, that we can have this point of victory. But we have to be willing to break free of all of this energy, right? All of this stagnation to claim what it is that we want to birth, to claim what it is that we want to, that we desire in our life. I'm actually really, really loving this energy. Even though it might feel a little bit challenging, that's okay because it's pushing us to grow. Everything is always pushing us to grow. So, and this is this full moon is really asking us to see what is the bullshit stories we are telling ourselves, right? What is the things that we're staying in this mindset of? Every single bullshit story that you are still holding will be illuminated over the next, I'm going to say, four to five weeks, because we are definitely seeing this pull coming up. Every single limiting belief that you still hold, it's going to be brought to life in some way for you to witness. And whether you grab it, whether you see it, whether you can clear it, whether you can work with it, that is going to be your story, your journey. But there's so much that's going to be illuminated because we have to come out of this. Like We have to start coming out of this energy. Right, We are here for the next evolutionary phase and we can either put our blame to other people or the universe or circumstances or we can, you know, buckle down, go through the, go through the evolutionary sort of journey, go through a little bit of that trudgery, knowing that it's leading us to this. 
Okay, let's get a couple of energy support cards here. What do we need to see? We're going to get four of these, I think. Okay, we have grounding. Ground your energy. Ground, ground, ground. I'm also hearing for some is to make sure you're doing things like salt baths, making sure you're doing things like energy clearing, really, really feeling yourself grounded in the present moment as well. And that is so important, being as grounded as you can in the present moment. We have soul song. I love that. Because we are all here to share, to experience, to live our soul's song, out that sort of inner voice, that that desire that we hold at the highest frequency of soul. What is your soul song? Connecting into that. If you could ask your soul to share its voice with you, what would it say? How would it show up for you? Is it really loud? Is it a soft whisper? We have divine perfection. So something I spoke about the other day was perfectionism and I said perfection, perfectionism is bullshit because it is, it doesn't exist. Perfectionism does not exist. And we all strive for perfectionism at some level, at some point in our lives. And that is all to do with our wounding, our core wounds, create this level of perfectionism within us. And what I'm really seeing with this energy, why is this not being straight for me? It's frustrating me. Um, with this divine perfection, though, this comes down to, it doesn't have to be perfect from our human consciousness, but there is such a thing to me as divine perfection. When it comes to divine timing, everything is aligning in the right, you know, in the right way. We have to sometimes surrender our own human ego attachment to perfectionism because that is all created through the constructs and conditioning of our societal beliefs. And that is deeply, deeply embedded in our core wounding, releasing that, but allowing for this energy of divine perfection, because if it's meant for you, it'll come for you. If it's meant for you, it will land. If we create the space to receive it, if we are full of all this other garbage and all this other crap, then we won't have space to receive it. So we need to allow that space for that divine perfection to land in our field that's a really interesting message okay let's get one more of these we have power of voice i love this we have soul song and power of voice coming up so speaking your truth and this is what sovereignty is all about standing in your power speaking your truth not shying away from what you believe what you feel is your soul's truth and really owning that voice. So how many of you have a like a limited voice right now? How many of you are still kind of in this state of fearing what people think if you say certain things, fearing the rejection that might come? If I stand up for myself, if I speak my truth, if I say the wrong thing, if I say it the wrong way, right? Because we can all say things that are true for us, but sometimes it's the way we deliver the message as well. That can be all the difference. So feeling into that, are you reacting or are you responding? Are you speaking from your heart or are you speaking from that reacted trauma wounded state because that also can really impact how people receive it but if you don't start speaking your truth feel into that if you have any kind of um wounding in sacred wounding which really comes down to our prophet wound it comes down to our priestess wound our witch wound about this fear of persecution for speaking truth so if you have any fears around speaking your truth of standing up for yourself really speaking your soul's voice into the cosmos right feel into if you're holding that sacred wounding in any way and really start to clear that again this full moon is inviting in so much deep deep purging this full moon and the upcoming few weeks couple months there's going to be a lot of purging because everything that isn't in alignment with this is going to start showing itself to you so you can clear it and that could be a little bit like a little bit sticky a little bit uncomfortable for some people and that's okay. You're allowed to feel that. You're allowed to feel the resistance. You're allowed to feel that frustration. You're allowed to feel the stickiness and still be willing to journey into it. And that's the key is no matter how much stickiness, no matter how much uncomfortable energy is present, can you still be willing to be in it, knowing that it's getting you where you need to be, right? Keep your, keep your focus on what it is you desire. Keep that arrow poised to the direction of your dreams Come hell or high water is what I'm hearing. Like there is, there's nothing but this, knowing that everything then that is showing up for you to clear is because it's in service to this, right? Even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. Let's get a final message here. What do we need to see? Let's just get some nice, we're going to get some nice little messages here. Final messages for this full moon energy. We have... Koi fish spirit, there is always enough. I love that. 
there is always enough, but also what I'm really feeling with this koi fish. And some of you may have seen a reading I did uh, a little while ago. It was around Lionsgate season. Lionsgate, we channeled an activation called the Dragon's Gate activation, and we did a dragon. So we did the Lion's Gate meditation and we did a dragon activation. So activating your inner dragon energy. And we did this through the Lion's Gate portal. And what that really symbolized is this journey of the koi fish that becomes the dragon, right? This koi fish that really allows itself to step into its highest frequency and becoming that inner dragon. And this is through challenge. So the koi fish, the story, if you haven't heard it, the koi fish journeys upstream against the current and it meets what they what they call the dragon's gate which is the waterfall and they push and push and push and push and some of them most of them will give up and be like i'm just gonna stream like travel back downstream it's too hard it's too much of a challenge i can't be bothered anymore i'm tired i'm just gonna like kick it back downstream those koi fish again this is obviously a mythology story those koi fish who are willing to go the distance who are willing to persevere and they say the journey is a hundred years that they be they are transformed they become the dragon so no matter how challenging the circumstances are no matter how much you feel like you are pushing against the current are you willing to persevere knowing that what that's going to actually do is turn you into your inner dragon right you keep that arrow poised knowing that everything that feels challenging right now is leading you to the most highly activated self the dragon energy is something that i'm really really like strongly drawn to at the moment if you feel called to the dragon energy, if you feel called to the dragon's gate activation, it's available. I will link it down below. One of the most powerful activations I think I've ever channeled. And for me, I felt myself shift while I was channeling it. And I felt this entire kind of collective shift while I was channeling. It was one of the most beautiful experiences. So if that feels like you need that bit of extra support to really help you own that inner dragon energy, then by all means, have a look at it. I'll link it down below. But that's how I'm really feeling this is there is always enough energy. There is always enough within you to persevere, to push through, right? This doesn't feel like there's always enough in the sense that there's always enough. It's okay to just take a bit of a chill. This is there's always enough within you. We are resilient. We are warriors. And this full moon is a warrior full moon, right? This is the warrior full moon. We are stepping into this energy of like, I am a warrior. There is, I don't care if I get battle scarred. I am willing to get battle scarred if it means that I am leading myself towards my highest vision, towards my highest dreams. Next card we have is Electric Eel Spirit. Bring your ideas to life. So <laughs> there's a song which I, I'm not even going to try to find right now the actual lyrics or anything but there's a song that I'm feeling with this um coming through but bringing your ideas to life what will that require from you what will it take from you to like supercharge that energy to know that you can bring that energy to life right the other song that's coming through now is um gosh evanescence bring me to life is that what it's called bring me to life um that's kind of how this feels it's like this like wake me up does everyone remember that song oh my god it's just like really it's replaying in my mind right now but when that, that chorus comes in, it's like, wake me up, wake me up inside. That's how I'm feeling this. It's like, wake up inside and allow yourself to really put all of your energy into what it is you want to create, not what it is that you're trying to avoid. Let's get one more, one more message. We have Cat Spirit, claim your independence. So if you feel like you are kind of... I want to say it's like kind of that you're outsourcing your power, that you're always looking to other people to, this isn't a bad thing, this isn't something that's negative, but you're looking to other people to, to guide you, to show you anything like that, right? And something that I've always spoken about as a healer, you know, I've been, I've been a healer, quote unquote healer, because I don't actually like using that word, because I don't believe we heal anybody, I believe we create space and we give guidance and energy and support for other people to heal themselves that's my belief um but as a healer you know i've always said to people like don't outsource your power i would prefer you to teach you how to actually do the energy yourself to do the work yourself than to always 
you know, be needed for people to always need me to do it for them. And that's not a negative towards other people. That's just something that I wanted myself. I wanted to be empowered to heal myself. I didn't want to always have to outsource my power to be like, oh my God, I need another session. I need another healing. I need another thing over here, which is why I teach empowerment, which is why I teach this independent energy, which is why obviously Lilith and things like that. Lilith is all about independence, reclaiming your independence, stepping into your sovereign energy. And that's the reason we do that is because when you own that, when you hold that within you and you can activate your own inner healer and you can step into that level of sovereignty, you start to have this internal power that is so, I'm going to say this in the, the best way possible, but unfuckwithable, right? You have this power that is so unfuckwithable. And I talk about this when we look at things like energy and protection is that if someone has a stronger energy than you, they can breach your field. If you own this energy, if you hold that power within you and you learn how to really cultivate that energy within you, no one can fuck with your energy. And so one of the things I really try to empower people into is about having an unfuckwithable energy, right? That no one can breach your field if you don't allow them to. And it's allowing yourself to step into that kind of space where you have so much resilience, so much inner confidence, inner strength, right? So much sovereignty that you are going after your dreams, regardless of what anybody else thinks, regardless of how any other energy is impacting you, right? Allowing yourself to step into that. So again, taking all the messages as they resonate for you, leave whatever doesn't, because as always, this is a collective reading. If you want a personal reading, all the details are always booked below. If you want me to go deep into your personal story, and we can always really look at what needs healing, what needs more awareness, what you need guidance in, and to start stepping you forward into what it is you truly want to create. So if you want to work with soul purpose or anything like that, Everything is always linked in the description box below. And if you want to join me for the Full Moon Ascension Portal, which is our monthly group healing session, it's a way that I have been able to basically create a, a healing session, a healing kind of portal without having to book a one-on-one -on -one with me. Again, trying to make it more accessible for people, trying to give them the confidence to be able to step into this energy themselves. So if you want to join us for the Full Moon Portal, it's one of the most potent things we hold each month. It's one of the things I just adore to do. Um, that is coming up tomorrow, depending on when I launch or load this particular um, reading. So have a look at the details. Um, everything is always obviously down below and the, the date and the details will be in the particular event page. God, my brain is deciding to shut off right now. That's okay. So I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments um, and I will connect with you all again soon. Bye, beautiful souls.